Okay, everyone, good evening and welcome to this webinar, which is uh, being delivered by my good friends over at Poznan University of Medical Sciences, a beautiful city in Western Poland. I've had the pleasure to visit on a number of occasions. Uh, the picture behind me for those who are joining us is actually the Central Square in Poznan. I've got a few particular good restaurants that I really enjoy going to. Uh, I think the Mexican restaurant is actually one of my favorite where they do those awesome cocktails. But what we're gonna do, uh, for everyone who's joining us is we're going to give it a little bit of time because what tends to happen is people as they're signing in there's usually a bit of a lag uh, so we'll just kind of give people an introduction to what we're going to talk about today and a bit more about uh, Poznan itself so for those that have never already heard about Poznan it's a beautiful city I think about half a million people is that right Kate? Yes. In yes. western Poland if you just move literally east of Berlin you will eventually hit Poznan reachable to Warsaw, reachable to Berlin, reachable to Gdansk on the coast, if that's your thing. Most importantly for the students who are in Britain, direct access from London, which I've uh, partaken on a number of occasions, actually from more than one airport. Now it used to just be Stansted, but you can fly from multiple airports now to Poznan, which makes it great for stu British students who are studying out in Poznan, but really for any student who perhaps is gonna be traveling from, from Europe. We are expecting a lot of people from all across the world today. I understand a lot of people from Asia are gonna uh, watch the repeat, which I've already uh, been asked about, and this will be going live on YouTube. If you have any questions or queries, uh, you can take a look at it there and get in contact with the Medical Doorway. So as more people are joining in now, I'm going to just introduce our two great speakers today. Uh, Kate, who I've met many times at our exhibition in London and also out in Poznan is joining us uh, at a last minute notice, because Veronica's got a family emergency. Yeah. So uh, if everyone can say, just kind of appreciate that Veronica, uh, that Kate, sorry, has dropped everything just to join us this evening. It is 7 p.m. Yeah, like ha half an hour ago. So just bear with me. Yeah. Yeah. And Vicky, Vicky is a third year student. Now, where are you actually from, Vicky? Which part of, where are you from? Uh, so, well, I'm originally from Poland, from the northeast, uh, but I grew up in Jersey in the Channel Islands. Okay, fantastic. So Vicky's obviously uh, joining us today. Vicky's a third year student on the six year pathway at Poznan University of Medical Sciences. And one thing we're gonna talk about today and a lot of the questions that I would expect is gonna be about the different pathways through the medical program at Poznan and the dentistry program as well. Okay, questions and answers guys. If anyone's got any questions and answers or questions I should say, we all provide the answers pop them into the Q&A feature that is on the uh, interface that you've got on Zoom. Alternatively, if you're joining us on YouTube or Facebook, you can actually uh, ask your questions there and we will of course address your questions however they get, however they get asked. Uh, what I will do is read out your questions so everyone gets the chance to hear the question and then we'll, we'll address it as a, as, a, as a group of people. Uh, as appropriate. And obviously for those who are joining the re-recording, at least you'll get the chance to listen to the questions and the answers themselves. Okay. So without any further ado, uh, Kate, I believe you've got a short presentation for us around about 10 or 15, perhaps 20 minutes, and then we can listen to that presentation. And then if anyone's got any questions as they go, just type them in uh, and then we'll hand over to Vicky Reed to talk more about the student, student experience that she uh, has had in Poznan. Uh, over the last three years and what she's looking forward to do in terms of her eventual uh, graduation and where she wishes to work after she's a qualified doctor. So I know this says Veronica, but Kate's joining us today because Veronica couldn't be here. So I'm going to hand over to Kate. I'm going to mute my microphone and, uh, and let everyone uh, listen to this wonderful presentation we've got. Okay, so I understand we all see the, the slides, right? It's all on. Okay, uh, awesome. So um, as Ben uh, mentioned, I'm actually Kate. Um, I also work in the admissions and promotion office. So um, I'll just uh, sh swiftly um, uh, go through our presentation about the school. Um, so um, as um, we are a non-profit public uh, state funded university with uh, more than uh, 100 years of tradition. So um, it's been a while we, we are here. Of course, it's not that long as some big uh, uni uh, university from UK, um, but uh, there's still a, a big tradition um, uh, of uh, medical education in, in, in Poland and Poznan. So, uh, back to uh, English programs offered uh, at our university. We actually started them nearly uh, 30 years ago 
which is, as you see, 1993. So next year we'll have a big uh, anniversary probably. Um, our university uh, has six teaching uh, hospitals where um, the clinical classes are, uh, are carried out. We also um, are very lucky to start. Uh, we, we've, uh, we were the first university in Poland, medical university in Poland, to 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 to, to open the simulation center. And now it's uh, our pride, and more and more classes are moved there just to uh, and classes with um, uh, mannequins. Um, uh, so so that's that's the that's the uh, the, the state of the art um, uh, equipment we, we we have. There's a very nice um, a video. Probably um, Ben can also. So um, uh, add a, a link to to, to, the, to the video we, we, we shot last shot last year um, uh, in our simulation center, and it also depicts all the cool things uh, we students can learn there. So that that's really uh, amazing thing. Um, in total, we have uh, more than seven thousand students, but uh, nearly uh, one thousand are international international students in English based programs. So it's like more or less one th seventh. Um, as Ben you, uh, uh, already mentioned, Poznan is um, uh, halfway through between Berlin and Warsaw. It actually, even by train, it's uh, faster to get to Berlin than Warsaw. Um, so uh, it's really in the middle of everywhere, and it's very uh, and there's a very easy access to 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 travel to different locations for city break, for example, or for holidays um, to different uh, European cities. So that's one of the things all our students always um, are very um, always think that that's one of the coolest things about about uh, our university and about the city itself. So um, so. Uh, more than uh, out of 500,000 uh, uh, um, residents of the city, uh, one fifth are students because there are lots of uh, lots of um, universities and uh, higher education institutions in this in, in this in this um, uh, in Poznan. So um, that's the the great thing, uh, as you see. Uh, a lot of things is going on right now. Um, so th this is definitely a student city. So, um, and uh, Poznan is, has been always um, uh, been regarded as uh, a city with, uh, um, with like uh, a lot of energy and there's actually the lowest employment rate in the country here. So as you see, uh, that's the very modern um, uh, phase of, the, of this, uh, of this uh, venue. Um, uh, as of now, we offer medicine and dentistry for international students. Both programs are, um, are offered in English, of course. And as I mentioned, we've been um, teaching uh, for more than um, for around 30 years in medicine. We started with 14 students from US. Uh, in the graduate entry program. And then uh, a couple of years uh, later, we started dentistry, five-year master's, uh, master's program. Um, so just a short, a quick information about medicine program. Uh, as of now, we have one uh, program in medicine, which is both for um, uh, high school and college graduates. Um, it's, um, as you see, the class is not that very big. Uh, it can be around, uh, 60, 80, up to, uh, this is the, the absolute uh, maximum uh, 100 seats. As um, the, the, the tuition, as, as you see, it's, um, it's, it's much less than compared to um, the UK. And you also have to take into consideration living costs, which are, which are much, much more affordable compared to, of course, um, UK. Um, we've been traveling there, so we know that um, UK is not that uh, expensive as Norway, for example, Sweden, but then it's still like you, the, 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 the living costs are so, so very important thing to, to think to, to take into consideration. And I, I believe our students will also mention that. So um, that's 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 the, 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 the main thing that that's the, our um, the, 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 uh, the, the, the program which we have most students and we uh, and we um, are always um, uh, most students of course are interested in studying medicine um, dentistry is a much smaller course um, I mean like the, the class size is around 20 30 students um, this is under undergraduate entry program um, and um, 
as you see, the tuition is more or less comparable because dental studies are actually quite expensive and like kind of to carry out the, the program. So, um, so these are our the, 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 our our programs. Um, as far as admissions is concerned, um, definitely what we take into consideration are your grades from biology, biology, chemistry, and math or physics, um, and then. Uh, all applicants have to take part in, in the in entrance examination, which is um, two steps, uh, written test, biology, chemistry and physics, and also oral interview. Right now, ever since COVID started, we do it online. So um, so we already started like la uh, late um, uh, January and we'll be carrying out with the uh, exams until uh, August. So if you're still interested, there's a lot of time to prepare. We on our website, we provide a list of topics to prepare for for for, for both parts for written and oral part. So um, and also if you register on our system, you can have access to um, self assessments uh, like uh, the, the old questions uh, from from previous years, where you can see the 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 the, um, um, the type of questions uh, we you, you can come across during the real the, the actual exam, um, and that's that's very important. So I just kind of urge you to kind of prepare well for the written part because that's that's uh, you, you can get you can gain a lot of points, and also this will be a good preparation for you. Uh, before the actual classes start, because you need this prerequisite knowledge uh, from biology, chemistry, and physics to do well uh, during the first year of your medical uh, studies. So, um, so as, as I, I, just 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 to kind of uh, finish on the topic of the admission. So we've already started. You are free to you you are welcome to register on our website um, and Ben's. Um, our uh, office can help you out with the, the whole process as, 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 as the same as um, my team um, uh, at the university. So um, there's still a lot of time to prepare. So just, just if there's any questions, feel free to contact us. Another thing which is important and is one of the, one of the things that definitely others, other universities do not offer is this um, uh, course, which is, um, uh, which is uh, which we uh, we are doing for many a uh, number of years right now in cooperation with Kaplan Kaplan Company, and this is a good review before the uh, clinical portion of of of, of studies. Um, we know that um, actually we as a university have started medical education in English based on American standards, and we know that as even right now this is a an important uh, kind of threshold for many um, for many uh, universities in other countries to kind of keep up to the standards. So uh, many we are aware that many um, graduates and students uh, are thinking about the, the American pathway, uh, even when they come from completely different countries, like even Taiwan or Norway or UK. So this is this this gives a good preparation for for uh, also uh, li li licensing examinations in the US. And also other countries, because we know that if also UK uh, will be introducing the, the the exam based on more or less uh, US MLE exams, so that will that's that, that that will give a good preparation anyhow. Um, also, we the OSCE uh, exams are, st are, are are more and more uh, important part of the curriculum as well, and we also prepare our students uh, to this. Um, we also have special practice rooms in dorms, but our simulation centers has a lot of um, um, uh, devices like that uh, as well. So, um, important part of the um, of the uh, ed medical education is, of course, is uh, doing uh, elective rotations during the last years of study and school is working with uh, VSLO to, um, to kind of help uh, secure these, um, uh, uh, the, the, the rotations. Um, and we know that it's very important when you apply for residency and, and uh, foundation program. So in total, we have a very big uh, community of students coming from different countries. Right now, it's approximately 50. Last time we checked, uh, like, um, a month ago, it was uh, more than 60 countries. So as, as you see, there's like kind of, you can meet students from 
each continent and each other country you probably sometimes you never heard of. So we still have a big um, community of Taiwanese students, American students, Canadian, British, Thai, Lebanese, Indian. These are the, the, the biggest groups. Um, so um, basically the school, the, the diplomas are recognized worldwide. As you see, we have separate, um, a separate um, some countries require separate um, accreditation procedures, which we kind of uh, comply with. So this is, um, and of course, right now, of course, you, you, it's not part of the U European Union, but definitely needs more doctors. So this will still, hopefully there will be more um, um, uh, the, the process will be adjusted to the, the needs because we all need doctors, right? Okay, um, so these are some the statistics regarding um, the, 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 the performance of our students. Um, as you see, they do very well in USMLE, this US um, medical licensing exams which is um, uh, higher than other international medical graduates, which is very, very good. Um, we have quite a good residency match rate uh, in the US and Canada. And we know that also our students do well in the UK, in the foundation programs, um, and also in Ireland as well. So, um, and others in other places too. Um, as for um, uh, non-academic uh, stuff, which is also, we know, very, very important for students. We have four dormitories available for students. We, they all are kind of in a working distance and, and very close to um, other school facilities. Um, the, we have uh, the residential advisor system. This is, we are the only school in, in this country which offers this kind of system. We've been doing this, we've started like more than year, 10 years ago. So, so we have um, a number of students, around 20, who each year uh, are helping out uh, other students um, um, to, to, uh, to, to handle all the mundane um, uh, issues regarding uh, living and, and staying in dorms. Um, arrays also tr to, uh, try to kind of secure the kind of um, uh, sense of building community among students. We know that's very, very difficult, especially in COVID times, but even, even with online events, you can do a lot and, and kind of try to maintain this kind of thing. Um, I've mentioned medical uh, dental simulation center. So, so um, um, we we were the first school to do to do to have this kind of facility in in this country. Uh, right now, if for more than I believe five years, there's a separate building which is dedicated almost solely to the uh, to the to the simulation center. There are. Um, uh, medical dental mannequins uh, and OSCE rooms and uh, also standardized patients, classes with standardized patients, so everything is, um, is covered there. Um, the other thing, um, okay, so that's one of the things we are most proud of um, because we have loads, of, uh, lots of, uh, lots of, there are more and more gr groups for, 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 for our students. These are national kind of like um, organization, for example, students from North America have their own and they facilitate uh, the, the career pathway. We have uh, Irish and British student group as well. They also kind of have some webinars and um, and other social events uh, for, for students either interested in um, uh, working in the UK, Ireland or or just kind of uh, providing um, some kind of help for for they for their fellow uh, students. So um, there are more than right now forty even clubs, which are something smaller than 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 uh, student organization. So there's a lot of opportunities for students to kind of jo join any type of activity they, they can only think about. As you say, this can be sports, this can be plants, this can be um, a chess club, uh, really outdoor community clubs. So there are lots of lots of lots of lots of these. Apart from from um, uh, uh, RAs, and we also have um, uh, har anti harassment group, uh, which tries to kind of also introduce some kind of policies at the university. Um, also, we, um, as mentioned here on this slide, we provide, we have a student advisor, the, 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 the faculty member who is uh, hired 
uh, hired to kind of help you out with all academical uh, stuff, just to kind of uh, go through you with, with any uh, issues you may have regarding curriculum. And not only, um, we have a group of um, uh, psychologists, counselors who help you out with any types of uh, issues, uh, mental health issues you may have. Um, and uh, and we have the staff to, to which is always uh, willing to 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 listen to, out to you and help out. So um, and this is also part of the, the kind of offer we have for you. So there's also a very modern fitness facility, um, and we have you, all, you you are free to join. Apart from the, the groups, uh, sports groups uh, and clubs, uh, students uh, have there's there's for more advanced students there are also opportunities to carry on with their sport activities. Um, there's always there's also many many initiatives regarding volunteering. So um, there's um, as I'm saying, our students are very very active in this field as well. So um, yeah. So just to sum up, because this is like almost uh, 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 one of the last slides. Uh, we have more than uh, 2,500 2, alumni all over the world. So our during our graduation speeches, our um, uh, students, graduating students always mention that thanks to studying at our university, they can have um, a couch to sleep on almost all on continents so that's one of the things you can always um probably that's the very unique experience you can get at our university so so and as we see many majority of them recommend the school so that's, that's something nice to hear about so now i'll give the floor to ben and vicky so thanks a lot for, for, for listening to me Lovely. Thanks for that, Kate. Uh, really good kind of summary of everything that's on offer at Poznan. And I think what I want to say before we move on to questions and answers, because we've got quite a lot of questions in, which is great to see, is it's more than just a medical school. Poznan is a fantastic location to be. Uh, you know, there's so much to do in the city and so much history as well. I've seen a number of different things from different parts of Poznan's history, both, you know, its illustrious history and a particularly, you know, uh, difficult history, uh, which has happened. In, in Poznan because of its because of its geographic location, but there's so much to see there and so much history and and, and culture, and you know. And just me, just let, let me let me mention that we can always uh, anyone interested in coming over can uh, contact us and request a campus tour with our students and mm. and talk to us. So you know, uh, it's always good to kind of check out the location, the, the place you went you you want to sp spend a few years of, of your of your lifetime, like kind of to kind of check this out. There's a very easy connection, so just kind of. If you are free to kind of contact us either via Ben or our website. So that's yeah, one of the other things you can do. That. And as I said, yep. thankfully with travel opening up a lot more in Europe yeah. now, yeah. Yeah. it's actually again possible to do uh, yeah. if you're vaccinated, etc. So you know, definitely go and visit Poznan. I would definitely, I would recommend going in the spring or the summer. In the spring and the summer, when I come for the enrolments, when I have come for enrolments in August, when travel was was uh, it's only really this next this year, I'm going to be able to come again really. Uh, the actual, you know, the centre of the town in the summer is glorious. You know, it's a great place to be. Right. So I think what we'll do is we'll go through some of the questions and then, Vicky, we've, I'll, we'll, we'll kind of bring you in at different points if that's OK. Some of the questions I've seen are kind of fairly uh, simple questions that I can deal with in terms of applications. But just so everyone gets a fair hearing to their question, I will go through them one by one. Someone's asked in the documents section, it asks for high school diplomas. I'm currently in year 13. So don't have their diplomas to upload at the moment. Would it be sufficient to submit my predicted grades? And if so, what format shall I submit them in? My advice is don't worry if you're in year 13, we can upload your GCSE certificates or something like that, as long as we've seen some history of you going through school, even if you're doing a level. So what I would do in this particular, and what I do do, because we manage the applications for many of the applicants anyway, is we write down the A-levels you're doing, but we'll upload your GCSE certificates. The university fully know that you haven't got your A-level certificates. In fact, you're not going to have your A-level certificates until a few months after you've enrolled anyway. And the university are aware of that. And we have an interim system in place with the institution to help that kind of smooth that particular situation out anyway. So I would say just get in touch with the medical doorway. We can actually go in and upload those documents for you into your section of the application. Do not worry about that whatsoever. Now, this is why I can't really uh, answer. So this is something that I'm going to probably hand over to uh, both K 
Kate and, and Vicky. As an international student working with work upon graduation, what are all the options? Is Poland an option as well? Well, you can come and work in the UK, you can go and work in the US, you can go and work in Australia, New Zealand. There's so many places you can take this qualification. Uh, however, if you want to do actually uh, work in Poland, what would be the opportunities there? Kate, can I kind of pass that one over to you? Do you get many yeah. international students who choose to stay in Poland? Personally, if I was, you know, had the opportunity to stay in Poland and get a Polish passport, actually not being a European <laughs> Union citizen anymore, it's definitely something I'd consider. But what would be the steps in place? Yeah, so, so of course, the, the people who um, apply need to also take into consideration that each medical um, uh, degree, uh, if you graduate once you graduate from a school from your medical university or you 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 get a diploma from university and in order to get um to have a license um to 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 a right to practice the profession there are certain uh requirements that have to be met and they are set um separately by some kind of local chamber like med general medical chamber for example in the uk so each country has set its own um uh, requirements for example in the us you have to go through uh ecfmg uh, certification and pass yes and steps so even though the the, the 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 whole process is not that very easy i mean like the, the exams are really tough but then the the, the system is pretty straightforward so in each country actually has its own uh, rules. So it's always a good idea to check this up, even though actually this changes all the time. But then, as I'm saying, we have students uh, working in the student organization like North American Student Organization, AMSA, American Medical Student Association, Chapter Post 9, uh, uh, Irish and student, uh, British Student Group. They all um, are keep in touch with the, um, the recent graduates and they are very well acquainted with the whole old changes and everything. And they each year they have they, they they hold a few they held they held a few events regarding what to do in order to kind of go through the process like uh, smoothly and uh, efficiently. So uh, so uh, it, it, it's good to be aware of the whole process and that it, apart from diploma you also have to kind of apply for the right to to, to practice the profession. In some countries you also have to do internship like. Um, like so so that's one of the other things in Poland right now because there are, there are some students I'm like there are not many of them um there, there are some individuals who because you know life is strange and different things happen you can start studying here like thinking that you will end up in the country you came from but then you, you may change your mind you might meet someone and Pans is actually very good and kind of meet, uh, connecting people from different uh, countries so you know you can end up in completely different country so um you can you can you know the school also gives you preparation to to to, to do that kind of prepares you because the the american level which we try to kind of uphold is kind of like kind of right now in the medical education is a kind of is a very at a very high level so uh, i even heard from students um who who came back to the uk that when they spoke to the other people they met during foundation program and they were like you had nbmes really like you, you had kaplan wow this this is amazing right so this is not the, the thing that is offered uh, uh, anywhere else um but just to coming back to to ben's question so in poland actually you need to do right now the 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 the, the, the law is that you have to um when you once you graduate you have to do the the, the internship uh, and you have to take the the the, the medical examination, uh, which is also offered in English. But as of now, in order to to, to get the right of, of practice, you also have to uh, take um, uh, an exam uh, in Polish. So these requirements may change, but as of now, this is how it works. So um, not everyone, you know, you have to possess knowledge of Polish at the level. You know, some some do it, so it's doable. It's not like it's not possible. But as of now, these are the requirements, right? Wonderful, perfect. Uh, some there's some generic questions do come general that we can pass through quite quickly. Then there's actually a couple I've looked at, uh, <clears throat> Vicky. I'm going to hand that on to you actually. Uh, <clears throat> it says, when do we register to write the entrance exam? If you apply on the medical doorway website, we'll register you on the Poznan system. We then to build your application. It takes a little while because it's not uh, we've got to put a lot of information in there, and then we submit. 
and then you get to choose when you want to take the exam and there's exams every month until kind of july august time the earlier to do it the better obviously uh, but it's trying to find the right opportunity to do it the best thing is get the application in let's get it on the system and then you can then register fully for for the exam and choose the month in which you take it still this year the exams are online uh that might change in the future we get back to in-person exams again which we used to host in london which were you know fantastic uh, days with a huge number of students being interviewed and examined we usually do them over two days actually because we had that many people uh, but until until we're back to kind of a full you know full unrestricted travel uh, the university decided just to run them online so everyone's equal because they used the university would just have run exams in japan in taiwan etc and obviously to keep it equal for everyone exams are still online but if you apply then we can register you for an exam say march april may june etc uh so as i can we get a link for the university website very easy to actually find just put in poznan university of medical sciences into google and you'll find it top and you'll find medical doorway a few down but uh, you'll definitely find the university website there. It's a very clearly laid out website with lots of information uh, there, as, as well as add the link to apply if you don't apply through Medical Doorway. Now, someone's asked a question here, and this is linking to some of the uh, A-levels and IBs, and I'll talk about that shortly. I um, just want to make sure I've not skipped a question there, which I didn't. Good. So are we eligible for entry for taking biology and chemistry and psychology with no maths or physics? Yes, you can still apply and take the entrance exam. The entrance exam itself, it's, it looks at many different aspects. It doesn't just look at those three subjects as a core of the entrance exam. There's also the interview component, your personal statement. So don't worry if you haven't taken maths or physics at, at, at A level or at a higher level on the IB, you can still apply. And we have many applicants whose A-level profile is biology, chemistry, and another subject that's not maths or physics, who successfully graduate and oh, so successfully pass the entrance exam, I should say, get into the university and then graduate. As a matter of point, Vicky, what were your, did you take A-levels, Vicky? Or did you take another curriculum? I did A-levels and I did biology, chemistry, physics. So okay, that was a bit easier, yeah. but uh, yeah. one of my friends who's also from the UK and studying at uh, Palms, she did biology, chemistry, and psychology, hmm. uh, and she found the physics part because um, all of the topics are listed on the website of things that you need to know for the uh, entrance exam. She went through that and she found it okay just to prepare uh, on her own without actually doing the A level. So. Yeah, I honestly think the physics itself there doesn't seem to be a big fear about the word physics, and I think it's undeserved actually because a lot of physics is just applied mathematics or common deductive reasoning actually especially on these entrance exams and i find that for Poznan and other institutions that have physics in their exams as well someone's asked is an md degree obtained in this respective university accepted in other countries like the usa and canada in fact actually poms poznan is one of europe's most famous universities for students going to back to work in the united states you've got some amazing links with US hospitals and graduates, haven't you, Kate, actually? If you want to elaborate on that a little bit more, I think that's worth worth more comment, actually. Yeah, so so actually we have, like, as, as I mentioned, we, we started with Americans, right? The, the curriculum has been more or less uh, design uh, tailored for the, for the American um, uh, market. So we definitely uh, have a lot of graduates from there right now, even out of, um, 2,500 international uh, graduates, uh, around uh, 600 are uh, Americans, but many, many others uh, came back to this market. It's not like only Americans came back to, to work in, 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 in the US. So we still pro provide a good preparation for USMLE exams. So this is one of the, 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 the things that, uh, that really are uh, are unique like for, for, for the school so so definitely we do have um a, a, a good links with 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 our graduates so we often um of course can we change that a bit but still there are webinars and we try to kind of invite them over so we definitely are trying to kind of increase our um links with with, with our american um uh, alumni so there's always possibility kind of to find a way and our student our student organizations 
they are very very they have a very, have a very, very good um um uh, tradition like in maintaining these links and and connections and also uh they they have a very good um uh, knowledge what's uh, 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 as of now um uh, uh, uh which kind of requirements should be met and they 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 they, they really know uh, all the ins and outs of the whole procedure so so this is the the, the, the help that is offered even by students to students perfect Someone said, when does the entrance exam take place if you apply around October? Actually, en the entrance exams start from January and then take place every month. And like I said, this year, they're still online. So you can do have to take the entrance exam at a particular point. If you've applied at a particular point, you can book it in as, an appro as appropriate for yourself. Someone said, how does the university go about helping us prepare for USMLE step one? That was actually very well covered in the presentation. Is something Poznan is particularly famous for in terms of helping prepare and they do bring in Lectorio and Kaplan. I know I've met uh, representatives from Kaplan, actually a good friend of mine from Kaplan in Poznan in the past actually as well. So I think that's something which you'll find a lot more information on on the, on the Poznan website as well. And I think what, what we'll do is Kate, is, uh, sorry Kate, Vicky, have you, got, have you gone through any of the USMLE stuff? I know you're thinking about perhaps moving to back to the UK, but have you actually gone through the uh, the, the, the kind of the Kaplan program or anything similar? Um, so we're actually starting Kaplan in uh, just over two months, uh, but I've seen some of my friends from up years go through it and it's a really great opportunity to kind of go through everything that you've learned in the first three years of, uh, of university. So I think it's a really good thing that we have the opportunity to do that, especially since it's like Kate said, free of charge and um, it definitely helps with preparing for step. Perfect. Okay, someone said, what are the admission requirements for an IB student? It's not so, I know what you're thinking, as an IB student, you're thinking you need a certain amount of points for admission. It's not like that, really. It's based on the entrance examination. And if you get enough points on the entrance exam, you then have the opportunity to, well, you're selected, you have the opportunity to enroll. You then need to successfully graduate with your international baccalaureate because that then confers the eligibility to enroll at university. The points that you get on the IB are not utilised in terms of making a decision on your admission. It's how you do on the university specific entrance exam. It's a very similar system with other countries around the region or universities in other countries around the region like Czech Republic and Hungary etc that have a similar system. So don't focus too much on thinking you need to get a certain number of points on the IB, you need to get a certain number of points on the entrance exam and successfully graduate with your IB. And there's a related question to that, what subjects at IB are required at the higher level? Do you need to take three sciences? No, you don't. And, and, and as correctly stated in your question as well, most people do not take three sciences at the higher level. You'll take a maximum usually of two sciences at the higher level and then maths, usually a standard level, which is perfectly acceptable. Even if you haven't got two sciences at the higher level, you are eligible to apply and take the entrance exam. Obviously it's going to be tougher because you haven't got as higher level grounding in science that you would have if you did two subjects at the higher level. But at effect, you, you know, if you're doing maths, and, sorry, if you're doing chemistry and biology at higher level and maths at standard level, that's a usual IB profile that we find from our students who are taking IB pathways into medical school in Europe. Someone's asked about number of places for dentistry in a presentation that's 30, I believe. Okay, fantastic. That's because the program is in English. It's not like there are a certain number of spaces for international students and a certain number of spaces for Polish domestic students because the Polish students study on the Polish language program and the international students study on the English program, the English parallel. So you're not in competition or you're not like it would be in the UK where you might have, say, 90 British or domestic students and a small slithering of international on top. Uh, do we get to learn by dissecting cadavers as well? I've seen the facilities in Poznan, they're spectacular. Vicky, tell us a little bit, a bit more about your experience of learning anatomy and what, experience, and what kind of facilities you had access to. Sure. So um, it was actually my favourite subject, I think, to this day. Um, so we were split into groups. I, I believe it's around 10 people per group. And on the first day of anatomy labs, we basically get a cadaver that we kind of dissect our way through uh, throughout the course. Uh, and it's very, um, 
I would say it's a weird experience on the first day because it's like your first time seeing it and the smell is very intense. But then as you get used to it, it gets better. But it's a very interesting course and it definitely helps you kind of understand the structure, the anatomical structure of the body and where everything is. And then when you're actually studying, it's easy to kind of think back to when you were in, in anatomy lab and you saw the body and you saw all of the structures. And also when you get to third year, right now this week, actually, we also have autopsy labs. So you get to see um, autopsies as well later on. Fantastic. So I'm, I'm a bit of a traditionalist because I used to teach anatomy uh, in the past many years ago and, you know, learning from dissected cadaver, cadavers, there is no better way to learn human anatomy, really. That's a fantastic resource that uh, you'll have access to at Poznan. And then you take that forward into that simulation environment as well. So you're applying now, you know, that fantastic knowledge in a clinical environment, which on, with simulators gives you a great risk-free opportunity to develop those clinical skills. Someone said, I'm in the second year of A-levels right now, so I'll be applying for the 23 intake. Well, if you're in second year of A-levels, you can apply for 2022 intake still. Uh, but do I write the entrance exam and apply this year or next year? You will take the entrance exam in the academic year that you are looking for admission. So if you want admission in September 2022, you take it in 2022, 2023 for 2023, and so on. Uh, it's a little bit different than the UK system where your deadline is the October the 15th of the year before you enrol. Uh, with the current ongoings between Ukraine and Russia, how much effect will this have on Poland, in your opinion? Do you feel it's safe for potential student, students? There's no issue in Poland at all, actually. This is a situation between Ukraine and Russia. Poland's in the European Union. It's in NATO. And NATO Poland is a huge distance away from the border with uh, Ukraine, uh, it's literally and I, yeah. I can only mention that Germany. that yeah near, near the campus we have uh, uh, American soldiers are actually stationed, so they are our neighbors, <clears throat> and we also work with them because they also need training in our medical medical simulation center. So if if it can uh, add some kind of more peace of mind to some 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 student, then here you go. Um, there are many uh, soldiers, um, American soldiers uh, stationing here. But as, as Ben mentioned, there's a great distance. Of course, we kind of um, uh, we are looking how how the all the uh, everything uh, um, is kind of uh, uh, the, the, how the situation is is going on. Uh, but um, there's a really a great distance. So so um, no 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 nothing nothing to worry. Actually. Well, as I said, Poland is a, is a is a European Union country and a NATO country as well. Yeah. So you know, there's no suggestion that there's going to be any uh, intervention at all uh, because that would be catastrophic uh, in many in many ways. And like I said, it's you know, it's it's a huge distance away from from that from Ukraine anyway. So uh, in fact, we've been getting lots of requests, and I know I spoke to Kate before we started. This webinar we've been getting lots of requests from students who've been studying in ukraine who are asking can they study now in poland obviously we can't transfer but there are opportunities for appropriately qualified students to start off in year one if that was uh, the case so it says what's the deadline for the application if i'm in my first year of a level well if you're in your first year of a level you don't even need to worry about applications yet what i would suggest doing is coming along to our exhibition in november at the royal society of medicine yes kate we do have the date already booked for that uh, because Poznan come every year and they're always one of the busiest stands uh, as they were again in November of 2021. So we'll be there 2022, November, Royal Society of Medicine. Details go on the Medical Doorway website in around about, uh, in about August time, September time. So you'll be able to book your free tickets there and come and meet the university face to face if you didn't perhaps want to do a trip to Poland in the summer. Right, I've got some questions here from someone based in India. Does the university require Indian students to sit the NEET exam for admission to the programme in Poznan? Kate? No, we, we, we do not um, uh, require any kind of, um, even as of now, even standardised exam from other countries. So, so we just need your grade from biology, chemistry, physics or maths, um, like from, from your secondary school. And then the most important thing is our entrance exam, yes. because that counts the most. So <coughs> no, no such requirement. Okay, fantastic. 
someone said, I'm in uh, class 12. So that's the final year of the Indian uh, education system because it's the same question, a person asking the same question. Final exams are delayed, results not expected before July. Can I still apply for studying medicine for the session starting in 2022? Yes, you can still apply, even if your results are going to be delayed. The enrollment's in August, and if certificates are delayed, the university can make allowances for that as well. Uh, so please just put the application to the Medical Doorway website, and then we will be able to get everything set up for you. Someone said, after graduating, uh, does the university assist in finding a hospital placement for their students? Can I work on my student visa in Poland immediately after graduating, or do I need to apply for a work permit? So there's two questions in there. One is, does the university assist in finding a hospital placement? Let's go back to what uh, I think Kate said before. There are many specialist interest groups at the, at, at the university. I've met them myself. You've got the North American group, Taiwanese group, you've got the British and Irish group. In fact, the students have taken that initiative on themselves. So there's a constant renewal of that leadership every single year in those groups. And they actually have built up links with hospitals in the UK, North America. And as a result, uh, many of the students are already in the process of considering their future career paths towards their as their graduation date nears. The university can't get involved in placing you in a, in a hospital in another country. Uh, if you want to work in Poland, then there is a procedure to go through the LAC exam, language tests, etc. If you wanted to do that, obviously, uh, that would be something to think about if staying in Poland was going to be uh, what you would plan at the end of your studies. Uh, someone says, I'm a three year exper experienced dentist or practicing in London and thinking about studying dentistry. If you've already got a dental qualification, you can't then enroll at the dental school at the university, unfortunately, because you've already graduated from that particular program. Uh, you just have to find another way to get licensed, I'm afraid, in the country in which you want to get licensed. There's plenty of study materials or guidance on the subjects that you need to study on the POSNAB website. Also at Medical Doorway, we do have a, uh, a set of resources as well, which are more generic for European entrance exams, which you can avail yourself of as well, should you apply with Medical Doorway, which is a free of charge method of application anyway. So definitely advise doing that. Uh, Someone said, quick rundown. I'll need my A-level final grades, predicted grades, depending on where I'm applying, IELTS, you don't need IELTS if you're a British passport holder. If you are not a native English speaker based on your nationality or education system, you will need an English level certificate. Uh, personal statement, entrance exam results, interview. Yeah, what we do is we build the application with all of your documents first, then you'll have the entrance exam and interview, we'll apply for that. And then based on that, you will be told if you've been admitted or not. And the thing is, the, the turnaround time for when you've been admitted is very quick as well. You're not waiting for weeks and months like you would in the UK. When we do the entrance exam in London, we often hear students here on the day of the exam if they've been admitted. I think that's still the case with the entrance, online entrance exams. Case. Yes, exactly. So basically, um, right now, um, our entry exam go this way. You take um, a written uh, science quiz on Friday in the afternoon, and then yeah. either on Saturday um, on Sunday, you have an interview and we calculate all your points. Um, and uh, on the day when you have an interview first, you all, of course, you have all the questions, personal statement, intro, mm -hmm. etc. Um, and then uh, the commission, uh, the committee uh, is calculating, uh, adding all the points and they give you information about the result of the whole admission process, like kind of a few minutes after you finished your interview. So you know that on the day, whether you accept it or not, uh, waiting list option is not that very popular, but then you, you know, um, you know, then whether you accept it or not, this is the most important information. Perfect. Someone says, can we take the test twice on two different months? As far as I'm aware, you can only take the entrance exam once per academic once. year. Yeah. So you can't take it twice. If you, if you don't pass the entrance exam first time around, you've got to wait to the next academic year to reapply. Uh, I'll be taking my finals this year, October, November. So this is someone whose education system is perhaps different than the European one. So you'll apply in 2023. So if you're not graduating from high school until end of the calendar year, you're applying for September 2023 admission. This is often the case with students in the Southern Hemisphere whose education system runs from January to December rather than September to August, actually. 
Someone's asked about scholarships and financial aid. Uh, my understanding is you have to simply bring the funding with you. Uh, there are no scholarships or financial aid. If you look at the tuition fees, they're very competitive anyway, especially for a program as uh, very well regarded as Poznan. Uh, there, some students do come from some countries with some kind of student loan scheme as well. It's not available for British students. There are some available in through, I think, through Sally May, except in the States. Some students from Canada bring some funding with them as well, or some other countries do have funding mechanisms, but uh, you have to effectively bring funding with you. You're not going to find any in Poland, especially as an international student. There's no way of getting it to pay it back if there was. Uh, right. Do graduate students go through the same application process? Now, I'll start this bit off, and then I'm going to hand over to Kate on the second part of that question. You go through the same application procedure, we need a number of documents, et cetera, but how your documents are then assessed differs a little bit from the students who are applying for the undergraduate pathway. Okay, can you just tell us how you assess graduate students? And because I know graduate students can have a slightly quicker pathway to graduation through Poznan still, even though the advanced MD is no longer in existence. So what's the procedure? Just so we can clarify that to those graduates who are listening to the presentation today, as well as those who look at the rerun of this. Yeah, of course. So, so uh, uh, last year we, we we kind of had to discontinue the the, the 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 graduate entry pathway. So right now the application is the same uh, for high school and and college or like kind of students with with uh, with undergrad undergraduate degree who want to uh, pursue their they, they, they degree in medicine. So basically. Up until the entrance exam, the procedure is the same. So you, as of this year, you can get some extra points if you have standardized, standardized exams uh, scores, like as we as listed in our <laughs> website. But apart from that, basically the application system is the same. All our applicants have to take part in the entrance examination. There are no exceptions to that. So. Um, if you provide your transcript, um, uh, upload that in our system, and then you'll be notified of the of the option to um, have some courses um, to be exempted from some courses uh, during the first um, uh, year of your study uh, of the medical curr curriculum um, uh, at our university. So um, uh, hopefully we'll be able we'll be able to streamline the process um, uh, much more. Uh, so. Um, it, once accepted, you'll be notified of all the steps. Um, so hopefully you'll be, uh, before you start uh, studies uh, in the fall, you will more or less have a good um, uh, grasp of what 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 what, what kind of uh, which uh, courses you have to complete. But there's very important information for you that even though though you'll be exempted from the courses you had completed at different university, you'll have to still take a test or exam. Yes. Because we at the university, we have we kind of are confirming that the learning outcomes you've achieved at your previous school um, are the level which is is okay. So, um, so this um, process uh, is uh, is required, and this is one of the things that you have to remember um, that you, even though you will not be um, once your syllabus and all the the, the transcript will kind of show the course coordinators at the university that you can be exempted from the course course then it still does not mean that you 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 um are exempted kind of like you do not have to you you have the same grade um uh, 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 on our, uh, our our records no it does not work that way because you know medical school um is a bit different level as well. So the university has, has has this autonomy, and it's also included in our regulations that we kind of have this, um, and, and it's also in our regulations that you have to take the test and, and pass the exam. So this process is a bit more streamlined, but then, um, you know, we'll, your, your knowledge from these courses will still be verified additionally. Perfect. Uh, so that one. Uh, do we get a, right? Someone's asked about about working with patients. Okay, yes, you obviously do come into hospitals and work with patients. Uh, you can't qualify medical school without that. Uh, Vicky, are you you're about to start that, aren't you? 
Yeah, well, we they actually kind of lead us in slowly. So in second year, we had a one week course. It was called semiotics, where we were in the hospital and we kind of got introduced to speaking to patients. This year, we also had an intro into internal medicine and intro into pediatrics, where we also got to like take patient interviews and we learned how to do physical exams. Uh, but yes, from next year onwards, it's going to be mostly with uh, with patients. Uh, as those are the clinical years. Right. Uh, a question about English competence. Yes, if you're not a native English speaker, you will need to take an IELTS T4 test to prove that you can speak English because the course is an English language program. Uh, acceptance rate for international students. It's not, it's based on the entrance exam. So there's no rate where you say we accept this number of international students. If you get the right amount of points on the entrance exam, and it is literally points based. So there are points for the exam, there are points for this part of the application, there are points for this part, then you will be ad admitted. It's not like there's not a quota or anything like that. There's a defined number that they can take maximally and there's a little bit of flexibility depending on how many apply in any one particular year. And the pass mark is determined uh, with you know, how much data is being collected over the year. So the university know how many applicants they'll receive, how many will pass the exam and how many who do pass the exam will eventually choose. You can chart that data year on year on year and it varies only by a, a small percentage. Are there any additional special requirements for applicants from Southern African region of the world? No, everyone is treated equally. Everyone has to go through the same application, same selection procedure. There's no special requirements at all. Obviously, if you've not got a European Union passport, you will need to apply for a visa and immigration permission to remain in Poland. But uh, that's the only difference. And that's something even Brits have to do now as well. Uh, so it says, can I have a list of the UK and USA hospitals affiliated with Poznan, i.e. a list of hospitals I can do my internship in the last year of the MD? You don't do your internship overseas necessarily in the last year of the MD. You do it in Polish universities. It's linked to your state exams. But there, for some students, they do do some clinical attachments outside of 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 Poland as well. Uh, but that's often there's no there's no necessarily uh, kind of significant numbers that do that. Okay, how many how many students in the international program will do some of their clinical work before they've graduated outside of Poland? You know, uh, I believe like kind of. Um... This is these are always like kind of I know five yeah, percent um, of the class. So internship is a completely different thing compared to elective rotations, which are required within the, the the curriculum before you graduate, right? So internship is something you do after you graduate. But then, right now, there's there's still a talk um, uh, in the Polish Ministry of Health to come back with the internship for the year, last year of yes. study. But still, we are waiting for the final uh, resolution on that. So we'll see uh, how this may work, right? So, so um, yeah, but it's, it's right now, it's a small number of students um, uh, who need that. Yeah. Okay, so someone said, if we do English A in the IB, will you still be required to take a separate English test? Now, if you're doing international baccalaureate, then you've got evidence that your education is in English and ordinarily you'll be exempted from English testing if that's the case. So don't worry too much about that. Uh, how many people apply for dentistry for each admission cycle? I don't know the numbers about how many apply. It doesn't really matter. What matters is 30 students are admitted and there's a pass mark. So don't, don't, I always advise students, don't focus on what everyone else is doing. Focus on what you're doing for the exam. Uh, as I said, winners focus on winning, losers focus on the winners is my philosophy in life. Uh, can I specialize in an aspect of medicine during the six year MD program, I obstetrics, gynae or surgery? No, you can't. You're doing general medicine and you will specialize after you've graduated. You won't even specialize immediately after you've graduated. You'll be doing your, you know, as we call it in the UK, your foundation years, because you need to get a broad practical experience of working as a qualified doctor before you then choose to specialize in a particular area. Your qualification is to be a general doctor uh, gen uh, a, uh, in general medicine. How many people usually apply for medicine for each admission cycle? It's What you've got to realize is that a certain number will apply, a certain number will bother turning up for the entrance exam, a certain number will then pass the entrance exam, okay? Uh, the focus isn't looking at how many people apply, it's focusing very much on if you're applying for this programme, 
you take the entrance exam, you then determine if, you, if you've been accepted and you determine if this is gonna be the right place for you. That should be the focus. Uh, Kate, do you know how many people apply on average just to kind of deal with that question? Although it's not massively important for each individual. Yeah, it is not. That, yeah, I totally agree with you that you shouldn't really uh, focus on how many and uh, don't, do not overthink that. Just, just focus on your preparation. As I'm, I'm saying, it's very important to prepare well for the written and oral parts just really take uh, this, uh, review all the topics. That's the most you, you'll get the 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 the, the biggest amount of, of points from from doing well uh, during the the written quiz. So please just think about that. Of course, there are ma much many more people applying for medicine compared to dentistry because that's the world trend. I believe medicine is still um, uh, more prestigious. Um, uh, the, the com but then some say that in dentistry can get much more money. So depending on what you read. <laughs> like to do so um i believe like two three people per one spot mm. more or less but with yeah. covid everything changes and each year kind of even since the pandemic oh, it's started a, it's a was different that, yeah that we, we, don't, we are not yeah, yeah we, we, we we see how it all goes so it, it's really difficult to say but we are really looking for uh for good candidates with good preparation from biology chemistry and physics because yeah. that's the that's the pre the pre knowledge you have to you need to have in order to do well during the medical school that's why we do not accept students who will feel uh, still need to kind of work on the 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 the, the, uh, the, the foundations of their knowledge yeah yeah. So someone said, can I sit the entrance exam in 2022, even I'm looking to take admission 2023? Only if you're in the final year of school. If you want to gain admission in 2023, my advice is just you'll be taking the exam in 2023. We sometimes get some students opting to defer a year, if, but that's only if they're graduating from school. But that's up to the university if they accept that or not. And application numbers have been quite erratic due to COVID. So, you know, my advice is if you're thinking about 2023, just apply in 2023. You don't take the exam in 2022. And now, at last, Vicky, we've got a question for you. And it's a really good, broad question. I like these ones. Uh, how is the student life in Poznan? It's really I'm good. Just hand over <laughs> to you. It's I'm really, really good. Here. Honestly, I, I think also what Kate said uh, during the presentation, you meet people from so many different countries. I've met people from so many interesting places that I ne never expected to meet people from. So it's it's really, really great. Uh, also, over the last couple of years, uh, there are so many new clubs uh, that you can join based on interests or different uh, specialties. So we have like Dermatology Club, Oncology Club, orthopedics club and then also the interest one so chess uh there's a polish english club as well um yeah there's loads there's loads so student life at palms is great student life in poznan in general is also very great you can meet people in lots of different places um yeah yeah, I could go on about this for, for ages, but I don't think. Yeah, it, 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 it's a Pandora's box when you talk about yeah. student life in a city as, as open and great as, as Poznan, you know, and uh, just the times I've been there, the city is buzzing and there's different things at different times of the year. You've got Christmas markets in the wintertime, in the summer, especially opposite the old brewery, which is now a shopping mall. There's a huge park area there. You can sit down and stuff. The city, the town centre, the square, which you can see on the image behind me, although it's on my green screen image, obviously, that is, is a fantastic place. Uh, and it's also a great tourist city as well. People do actually come to Poznan for long weekends and things as well. So you'll see a lot of people there. Okay. Uh, someone's asking, and it's not sort of a question I can answer, but someone's asking, are there many alumni from Japan who have qualified and are working back in Japan? Kate? Uh, so there are a couple, there are not as many, but um, one of our uh, of, of presidents of, of the main student organization, English Program Student Union, Askashi. Um, probably, if you if you go to our uh, Epsus uh, Instagram, you can find that her um, uh, take over, or because she's she's actually. Uh, got uh, licensed in Poland in German because she's also part German uh, and in Japan and she's doing her PhD her PhD in Japan so and I believe she even did that so and she's working there so so um, we can send you some some information more information about her I'm sure she will be um, will be happy will be happy to help out and, and answer some questions too perfect 
No, brilliant. And then someone said about employment rate. Uh, as far as I'm aware, everyone who qualifies gets a job because the world has never needed doctors like it needs it before. And many of our, I've, I've met Poznan graduates working in the UK and many have come to the exhibition as well. Uh, you know, the thing with uh, the thing with Poznan, it's got such a great reputation, especially in the US, Canada and the UK and Israel that um, you know students are graduating and going straight into employment even with britain leaving the european union there still retains that direct pathway until the mla itself is implemented anyway and with the mla poznan's in a great position to prepare students because the mla is effectively going to be similar to step two of the us mla and, and hybrid of that and plab by the looks of it although we're still waiting on final details but poznan's in a great position there to prepare the british students especially as it has been doing for us students over the years so I said, do you have to live in dorms in your first year? No, you don't. You know, you've got that option, but you can. Uh, you can choose, you can live out elsewhere if you wish. In fact, I've had students over the last two years who've opted to live in apartments for the first year because if they want that privacy, they've they've got it. And the last one, are we required to learn Polish? And there's two things I'm going to say about this. One is yes, you do need to learn Polish, otherwise you're not going to communicate with patients. And the other thing is. This is one of the best things about studying abroad that you will get to learn another language to enhance your CV and have the opportunity to, to, you know, set yourself apart from other people. And if you come to work, say, in the UK, you know, you will bump into people in British hospitals who have not, who have, uh, who have basically studied in Poland have worked in Poland. You'll even uh, come across people who have moved to the UK from Poland and you can communicate to them in Polish. It just it takes your practice to a whole other level. Uh, Vicky, I know actually you're both Polish and British, aren't you? Yes, yeah. You had a slightly diff you had a slightly a slight advantage there in that regard. Yeah, so for students who speak Polish, there's actually it's kind of like a advanced Polish class. So we have at the same time as all the other students, but we learn like more it's more medical Polish in our first year, so uh, it's slightly more advanced. But my friends who are learning in the standard uh, Polish uh, lessons, so it starts with all the basics, introducing yourself things like that. But the teachers are also really great uh, with helping with filling out forms, for example, for residency cards, mm -hmm. not residency cards, for yeah, residence cards, visas, things like that. And also just teaching you how to uh, manage in shops and things like that. So yeah, it's, it's a really good opportunity and you can't really not know any Polish and live here for six years, yeah. I think. And you know, if you're going to, if you, if, if learning another language uh, if learning another language is, a, is, is an issue for you, studying medicine outside of your home country is not the right decision, okay? I never have students complain to me about an issue learning the language. Students complain to me about biophysics or the academic subjects. They soon realize that learning anatomy is a lot harder than learning the local language of the country in which they're living in. And there are classes, it's an integral part of the program, so you're not learning it on your own you're learning it as part of the program but this is also what the city's there for go to the markets go to the bars go to the restaurants you know i i i'm learning another language right now and i'm uh, finding that you know my best way is immerse immerse myself in that language you know get to know the sounds get to know the, the words for the basic things i'm going to need you know potatoes for example or beer or whatever it is get to know those particular words first and then the grammar comes later someone's asked about dropout rates uh like i said if a student works hard turns up to lessons applies themselves they're going to graduate vicky's you know three years into the program uh so this is a very individual thing i think people think there's this notion of there's a certain dropout rate which is kind of mandated it isn't that way at all if your student doesn't turn up to lessons, doesn't work hard, doesn't identify their weaknesses and their strengths, they're going to struggle academically. And also, if students do fail something, which is perfectly normal at times, what do you do as a student to actually make sure you pass it the next time? Because students don't just have one opportunity to pass the exams. 
I'll start off with Kate with that particular question. You know, students ha have multiple opportunities to pass exams, don't they? Yes, they do. But just just coming back from this dropout uh, rate, uh, that's why we have a, such a very uh, much more elaborate compared to other uh, schools, especially in Poland, admissions process just to uh, accept students, which we more or less show that they will do well during the first year so that they have good foundations in biology, chemistry, physics, and this will allow them to kind of pass the first year because first year you have to pass, you cannot kind of repeat the first year. But as far as exams are concerned, Actually, you always have first repeat, probably like you can provide more information about that, but there are, um, uh, always in each syllabi for each course, you have you you, you have this information uh, and basically there are always two retakes at least, as far as I know, there's also also commission exam. So it's not that easy to be to be removed from the list of students. So do not worry about that. Right. So we we really that's why we accept only ex, maybe not only exceptional students, but good students who we are we are not accepting like 200 students just to kind of drop out like um, 50 percent of them. No, no, no. There's only kind of a, a small percentage of students do, that do, do not uh, pass that the first year. Yeah, uh, we've got a couple more questions we are going to have. We are running over time now, so I'm going to kind of limit it now because I do want to kind of make sure that we give uh you know, Kate and Vicky, the time to have their evening because it's now you know, getting on past eight o'clock in Poland. And also it's past seven o'clock in the UK. Uh, and I've horrendously jet lagged from a flight I took yesterday. So uh, what type of interview takes place? It's a panel style interview, which will assess some knowledge of science, but also your motivations and a bit more about yourself. No trick questions or anything like that. Uh, what are the down, I'll answer this one, I think. What are the downsides of studying in Poland? compared to the place like the UK, Australia, US? That's a very loaded question because you're asking about downsides, not upsides. Uh, there is no difference in terms of, because you meant you asked apart from language. There is no language barrier because the program is taught in English and you'll find that you pick up Polish uh, uh, very, very quickly. In terms of upsides, it's a lot cheaper to study in Poland compared to the UK, Australia, or the US. In the UK, there are so few seats available for international students now, especially since Britain left the European Union, because all European students are considered international as well. The competition is ridiculous. In the United States, there are so few students for inter uh, places for international students anyway, and it's postgraduate, so you can't go straight into medical school from, uh, from high school. You have to do a degree first. Many Australian programs are the same as, as that as well. Uh, not all, but also it's extremely expensive with very limited seats for international students. We're actually got a record number of students from countries in which we traditionally look at the UK, places like Malaysia, Singapore, Brunei, Hong Kong, especially, who are actually looking at European programs. Uh, can I work in Canada and the US after med school if I'm not from Canada or the US? Yes, you can. It is harder to get a job in the US or Canada if you don't have nationalities of one of those countries, but there are opportunities due for you to work there. Obviously, if you have a US or Canadian passport, it is more possible. It's not an issue of the qualification, it's an issue of your immigration status in those two countries. You're not gonna be prioritized compared to US or Canadian citizens. And that would be the same if you're applying to the UK and you're not British or Irish. Is Polish an easy language to learn? My argument to that is if you use it, it's easy to learn if you actually go and immerse yourself in the language. If you just only turn up to your classes and only surround yourself with other English speakers when you leave class, it is going to be harder to learn than if you actually try to use Polish and if you actively uh, try to use it. You'll find that most people in Poznan, do, especially in the bars, restaurants, cafes, speak English because the younger population all learn English from a very early age because English being one of the most widespread languages in the world means that uh, many people learn English and use it. And Poznan having that tourist industry as well will also mean that there are many English speakers who do use the language. One thing I'll advise students, and this is no different than any university in Europe, is if you're on the English program, do make friends with some students on the local program as well, the Polish language program, because many of the students on the Polish language program want to improve their English, and you want to improve your Polish. So go for coffee and have a half an hour Polish coffee and a half an hour English coffee. If the coffee is the same, it's just the language you speak and the conversation you're having. 
and the ways you can help improve each other's knowledge and skills of that particular language. That brings us to the end of 47 questions there, which I think is a pretty good record actually for the questions that are typed in. What I'm gonna do now is it is a quarter past seven in the UK and a quarter past eight in Poland. I'm gonna sign off for this particular webinar. I wanna say thank you to Kate, who stood in at the very last minute because Veronica had to leave us because she's got a family emergency. So to do that presentation literally on minutes notice and deal with those questions is, is uh, very grateful. And Vicky, third year in, giving your evening to us when you've probably got more important things to do at the end of February. Uh, you know, thanks for giving us your time. Uh, best of luck for the rest of your year three and going into year four. We'll thank see you, you graduating much. in a few years. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I want to say thank you for everyone who signed in. We've got a, people have signed out now, but we had a significant number of people signing earlier. Thanks to everyone who's joined us on, I'm looking at on YouTube and everyone who's joined us on Facebook. I'm looking there. We had a fair few people join us on different uh, for, uh, different uh, pro, uh, platforms, I should say, as we went through the presentation. Uh, we've had some thanks in the chat feature, both to yourself, Vicky, and also to uh, Kate as well. If anyone's got any questions or wants to make that application, medicaldoorway.com, you can actually book a video uh, conference call with us on Zoom directly on the website as well. Uh, apart from that, I want to wish everyone a uh, very uh, pleasant evening, if you're still in the evening, or a pleasant rest of the day if you're joining us from the Western Hemisphere, or further over in the Western Hemisphere, I should say. Stay safe, uh, and we hope to see more of you enrolling in Poznan later this year or next year, because I know a few people were looking at next year as well. I want to say thank you. Any thank questions, you. do get in touch with us. Hello at medicaldoorway.com or fill an inquiry form on the Medical Doorway website, and we'll be more than delighted to help you get your place secured at Poznan in the future. Take care. Stay safe. Bye.